Hi, my name's Chuck Ciccarelli with IWS Cells, and I'm excited to be back making videos. It seems like it's been a crazy long winter. In fact, it's what, the 24th of April, and I was snowmobiling this Sunday up in the mountains. It's just been crazy. We've been waiting for weather opportunities, and we finally got one. We made a video a few days ago of a uh, Supreme Air, and now we get to show you this 37-foot Newmar Superstar. This is our model 3727, and it's one of our most popular models. And it's really nice to be able to showcase it in all white. I think this is just like just the bomb as far as uh, color combination. But before we get going too far, I want to talk about price. And uh, we're not afraid to talk about price at all. The MSRP price on this coach is 526,106. So that's $526,106. That's US dollars, by the way. But that is the MSRP price. I can assure you, if you mention mine main, tell everybody you know Chuck, we're gonna work with you on that price. There is a little bit of wiggle room, a little wiggle wiggle. Wiggle. I'll show you wiggle room. Wiggle 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 So um, we're glad to work with you, but I do like to have fun with that. Look, I enjoy being in business and I enjoy a little bit of negotiation, but not too much. <laughs> but seriously, so this coach had over $51,000 worth of upgrades. So it's really important when you look at prices on coaches that you're really going apples for apples and really making sure that you're a very informed purchaser and that you know what's going on. And my intent on this video, obviously we want sales, but more than anything, it's to inform you. And we wanna make sure when you get to our facility that you're an informed buyer and that you know what's going on. And the last thing we wanna do is sell you this coach at 526,000 and have you call us two months later and say, man, I made some big regrets. I wish I had more horsepower. I wish I had less horsepower. So we really want to make sure we're really opening the door for you to, to really be an informed purchaser. So this, this video is going to go as long as it takes to get through this. So if you're looking for a short video, I say just like Lionel Richie said with the Commodore, sell on down the line. <laughs> if you want to stay and watch, and I'll, I'm going to give you everything I got. So stick with us and we're going to start out talking about this chassis. This is a Freightliner M2. Uh, 106 chassis. So what that means is from the back of the cab to right here on the front bumper, it's 106 inches long. So we take that dimension and then add that to the coach and that's how we come up with this overall length of this coach. I do want to tell you about this M2 106 chassis. It's equipped with the Cummins uh, L9 power plant. So that this engine makes 360 horsepower at 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. I would have to say this is what I would call our sportier chassis. The, the startability of it, which means uh, how it takes off from a standing stop, it's, it's a lot more sportier than you're going to see in the larger coaches. And I would have to tell you that I think this, this coach is right powered, meaning I wouldn't change a thing about it. It just works. Um, an example is when I had mine, uh, I drove to the coast with my wife and we don't think you could have driven it any faster in a pickup. Like you can stay with traffic uphill, downhill. I really just think this thing's right powered. And just to kind of put a little more of this engine into perspective, because people often say, well, you know, it's only 360 horsepower. My Cummins makes more than that in my pickup. Well. A Cummins, or a, they're both Cummins, but the Dodge pickup has a 6.7 liter in it. And that thing weighs, I think, right at 1,100 pounds. This engine weighs 1,900 pounds. So uh, nine, eight, 900 pounds more than the one in your pickup. This has a whole different, longer stroke, bigger diameter pistons, and it's really built like a locomotive. It just keeps that torque churning. Uh, when you're down low and you're trying to pull that hill. Everybody says uh, horsepower is what gets you uh, from is the speed and then torques what holds you up the hill. So another thing about it, I think Freightliner has 3,700 locations. So most of them are, I think a big portion of them are seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 
If you need support, you can call 1-800-Cummins. They've made it very, uh, very easy. They also have uh, wireless upgrades on this engine, so a technician with a scanner can um, diagnose it wirelessly, so that all works out really good on this thing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the, the hood and talk to you a little bit about it. This coach also has LED headlights, which I, I just can't, uh, well, they're just awesome. <laughs> you got tow hooks up here on the front. This is part of the 360 camera, but it's got a tilt hood. And one of the things that I really like about the Class C is accessibility to the engine. If I want to check the engine oil, it's right here. Power steering's right here. Fuel filters here. And overall, just serviceability. But so I was looking on the Cummins website. The, the engine oil change interval on this is 50,000 miles or 18 months under um, of highway use. So if you're running it day in and day out, I think you're going to be more like Hank from King of the Hill and service it every 18 months or when you get bored. W what I'm trying to get at is this, this is a truck engine. This is for vocational trucks, school buses, dump trucks, fire trucks. You know, when you're talking about like, especially life cycle of this engine, we've been selling tow trucks for 20 plus years. We put these in our bigger tow trucks, and it's not uncommon for these engines to go two, three, four, five hundred thousand miles. So, um, the best thing you can do if you own this particular coach or a coach with this engine is get out and drive it. Do what it was meant to do. It always pains me when somebody has a coach for five or six years and they bring it in and it's only got 4,500 miles. I'm like, get out and live. Go for it, man. This is not no practice life. And there's one thing I've learned from our customers is that they all say they waited too long to start living. And I mean, it's to me, it's go time right now, especially at my age, I'm ready to hit the road and start traveling. All right. I feel like I've kind of talked a lot about the engine. I would encourage you, if you want to know more, give us a call. Um, we can put you in touch with Marty or Marshall or anybody, and we'd be glad to talk engines with you. And uh, we're going to get on with the rest of this coach tour. All right, as we move back on the coach, one of the things I want to talk about is just um, easy to get in and out. It, and I suppose I talk too much about this, but I really think it's important for you to understand the difference between this and maybe a class A. On a class A, when you're in the driver's seat, your mirrors are usually way out in front of you. And as you sit in it, your your seating position is over the tire. And so like my wife and a lot of other people in the passenger seat really complained that they felt like they were falling off the side of the road when they were riding in it. My wife always says she felt like she was in a giant fishbowl. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the Class A, it's just not for me. And these are the reasons why, and I wanna share that. The other thing I like about this from a seating position is when I'm sitting in this coach, the mirrors, the steering wheel, the windshield, the dash are all very similar to me sitting in my pickup. When my wife drives this, she comments that she feels like she's, it's very similar to driving the pickup, just the way everything is. And so when you transition from different vehicles, it's nice to have that familiarity. <laughs> That's a tough one to say. Don't ask me to say it again. And then just getting in and out, when you pull into a truck stop and you go to fuel up, on most Class A's, you gotta come out the middle of the coach or at the front, and inevitably somebody's burp diesel fuel on the ground, and I don't wanna get in my coach so with this, I can open up the driver's door, slip my shoes off, and I go right in. I don't have to walk in and out of the coach. The other thing I like about having this is just uh, other options to get in and out. With these two doors, I've got these two doors as an option as well as the entrance door. So I got three possible entrance or exit points on the coach, which for me just gives me more options. I hate being constrained. And it's real easy to go up and down in the coach. You got nice, easy steps, good grab handles. And uh, this is also another good shot. Here's another grab handle of all the air seat controls. We'll go through a little more when we get inside of the coach. <clears throat> okay, as we come back, this is where you'll fill it up with diesel. This is lockable, which is pretty neat. This is your rear view camera. There's one on the right and left side of the coach. So when you turn your turn signal on, 
the camera view looks and see who's beside you. This coach has a full length wall slide. It's incredible. It goes from here all the way to the back of the coach. Numar does a flush fit slide right here, which I really like. <clears throat> You'll also notice that it has uh, these exterior area lights. I'll get up here and point to them. There's one right there and one over here. And anybody that's watched our videos knows that we try to put this on every coach we build because if you're out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night and you hear a bump in the night, you can turn the light on and illuminate this entire, uh, all the way around the coach. As well as if you need to access this side of the coach in the middle of the night, you got some lights. To me, that's very important. This coach is also equipped with a 360 viewing camera. <laughs> I tell everybody, as I get older, I'm a menace on the road. I actually just bought a new, ordered a new F-250 and the only reason I did buy a new one is because I wanted the bigger screen for the 360 camera. <laughs> Anyways, another story. But there's that camera right there. All right, now we're going to walk through these compartments because having uh, knowing what's in here is kind of important to everybody. <clears throat> in here you can see the batteries for the coach, so they're very accessible. This is on a slide-out tray, so servicing the batteries is very easy. All of these latches also lock with a remote control with the key fob. Fob, that's a fun word to say, isn't it? Here's the uh, 8000 uh, Cummins Onan generator. This is actually um, a Kubota tractor engine if you do some research on it. And, you know, I say it over and over and over in all these videos. These things are meant to be run. Like, don't be afraid to put thousands, hundreds, if not thousands of hours. I was just uh, looking at a guy, a friend that has a race trailer, and uh, he has 8,000 hours on his generator and it's still going strong. Yeah, if you read the operations manual on this, they tell you, run it two hours, don't run it 20 minutes. This thing is meant to be run. Okay, now as we come back a little bit further, Here's your power cord reel. And another thing that I like is this little notch right here so you can just push it in there and then close the door when you're plugged in. Other coaches, you have to unscrew a little plastic cover and stuff it through there. It's kind of just a pain. So they do a nice job here. Um, there's your inverter. This is the hydraulic pump for the hydraulic HWH slides as well as the hydraulic leveling jacks on this. This is a very um, reliable, robust system. I don't know how long HWH has been around, but I'm gonna say probably 20, 30 years. It's on a slide out tray as well, so serviceability is, is, is easy. Okay, here we are into the water or waste management compartment and I wanna walk you through a few things. Here's your outside shower, the hot and cold water for it, as well as a powered cord reel for your water hose. Uh, this is where you do your sewage rinse. So after you've drained your sewage, you can hook a water hose on here and there's a sprinkler inside of that uh, black tank that washes all the gunk out and gives it a secondary rinse. On other coaches, you would pull a lever to dump the black tank and the gray tank and on this Numar makes them all electrically operated which I think is just a really nice feature. It also has a home whole house uh, water filtration system there. It, it, I don't know. I, it's funny that I get excited about sewage management but as a guy that uses his RV all the time all these little things just add up to making being on the road that much more enjoyable. All right, as we're moving back, there's another small storage compartment in here. This is the exhaust pipe. Um, a lot of people want to know what that is. And it's funny, I hear lots of comments. Well, it's too low. And I've, I've never, ever seen one get scraped. Um, I don't know. Anyways, uh, side lights. Then as we get back here, this is your Oasis Hydronic heating system. I'm trying to step a little bit out of the wind here. So what is 
What is hydronic heating? Well, inside of this coach, there's several heat registers. And what happens is this thing is electric uh, heated as well as diesel fired. It's circulating hot glycol throughout the coach and throughout these heat registers. When a zone inside needs heat, a fan comes on and blows over the register and it blows heat inside the coach. What's really nice about this is that it also heats the hot water, so you have infinite hot water. And this is a system that's found on only these nice higher-end luxury coaches. It's a very expensive option. Once you have one, you probably would never want to own a coach without it. A few more things to know about this. So, when you're traveling down the road, it takes the engine heat and cycles it through all of the heat registers so you're not having to run this. You can also, in very cold weather, you can actually turn this on and it'll actually warm the engine block up before you start it. This is just everything about luxury and quality. <clears throat> now we have just a smaller storage box back here. Here we have a 30 amp RV plug. So this comes, power comes from the generator and this is another outlet. So you can plug in a cord here and power your trailer. You can run another camper with it. It's just one more auxiliary power source. Okay, now we're at the back of the coach. I think we're gonna go ahead and take a pause, turn this bad boy around so we get the sun so you can really see everything there is to see in the back. Okay, now we've got this bad boy turned around and we're gonna start down um, the passenger side of the coach, also known as the curb side of the coach in the RV industry. This coach has dual 50 gallon fuel tanks, so here's the um, secondary or off tank. We've already talked about the camera. This has two flush mounted uh, uh, slides in this side of the coach. So we're gonna go ahead and go through all of the compartments. So up here you have a nice storage compartment. Another storage compartment. Not a lot of, need to spend a lot of time on an empty storage compartment. Another storage compartment. And in here we have, ouch, the TV. So we can open this all the way up and you have a TV in here that pulls out. It also has a sound bar on it. And at first I didn't think I liked this down low, but when you really think about it, you're almost always sitting in lawn chairs. And then you can also adjust this uh, screen sh or sunshade right here so you get the best view on it. And I've actually really come to like it down here. All right, I'm gonna kind of slow my roll a little bit here and talk about the suspension and, and talk about weights. Because <clears throat> one of the things that I've always learned is uh, I follow a guy named Alan Mulally who ran Boeing and Ford and he always said the data will set you free. So having good data really can help make you an informed purchaser. And there's just, there's a lot going on in the RV world where maybe, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to go there, but I, I do want to talk to you about what I know. So the gross vehicle weight rating of this coach is 41,000 pounds. Okay, so that means if you were to take this motorhome and put it on a scale, Freightliner says we've designed the suspension, the brakes, the engine, and everything to carry a maximum load of 41,000 pounds. And that's calculated on starting on a hill, slowing it down, down a hill, the heating and cooling and all the design component, components are designed to support 41,000 pounds. So how did they come up with that number? <clears throat> well, first thing they do is you gotta look at the rear axle. This rear axle in here has a 25,000 pound uh, 
rear axle load rating. So you could put up to 25,000 pounds of weight on this. Most coaches in this class are gonna be running a 20,000 pound rear axle. So smaller bearings, smaller brakes, smaller design components. So this one has a 25,000 pound rated rear axle and it has a 16,000 pound front axle. If you had 25, 16 together, you get 41,000 pounds. Now, we need to talk about the curb weight. So the actual curb weight or the static weight, so if you were to take this coach and put it on a scale today, it's gonna come in right at 33,500 pounds. So if you subtract 33,500 pounds from 41,000 pounds, I believe you're gonna get about 7,500 pounds of capacity. And that's how much weight you could put inside of this coach and still be within the manufacturer's weight ratings. To put that into perspective, I was looking, you could put an F-150 four-wheel drive in here, as well as you, a couple dogs, maybe a couple kids, and all of your luggage and still be within the design rating. So I like to say Newmar's done a good job of giving you more chassis than motorhome. Many times we see motorhomes come in class C's and when we weigh them, there's only about five to 1500 pounds capacity left in the coach. They're on the most minimum chassis they can put them on to support, uh, I don't know if the sales goals that they're trying to reach that year, I don't know. But it's all about having data and understanding what the chassis is that will set you free, okay? This is also an air ride suspension, um, which helps to keep it level, but it's got another neat feature inside where we can push a, a, a button on the dash and we can actually lower the suspension if we, if we need to in certain instances you might want to. Okay, now as we move back, well, hold on. I just gotta say a little bit more about this because it's not all about the go, it's also about the woe. And these coaches are equipped with air brakes. And it also has a narrow parking brake. So when you pull the button on the dash, the spring brakes come out. And again, these brakes are designed to hold and stop 41,000 pounds on a hill. So you know you have the design components to go that extra mile. I also wanna mention a little bit about the warranty of, of these things. So five year um, unlimited miles on the transmission five-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the engine and chassis on this thing. So again, these things are just designed to go that extra mile. Why is all this important? So the speed limit here in Idaho is 80 miles an hour. We got wind blowing. So imagine you're driving 80 miles an hour down the road. You got a 20, 30 mile an hour gust uh, hitting you. You're never going to say, uh, boy, I wish I would have bought a cheaper coach or one with a lighter rear axle. You're always going to be thankful that you stepped up and went for the, the full Monty and, and bought the best you could buy. All right, stay with me. We're almost to the finish line on the outside of the coach. We still got all of the inside to go. I'm so excited to keep sharing this with you. So here we go. We're at this compartment. This one's pretty neat because it has a slide out tray which is something that I think has just been needed in one of these. You also have the central back located right here, and I like how they mounted it up a little higher so it's easier to get access to. I also have a 110 outlet. For me, I like to carry my Dewalt charger. Um, always like to have a outlet back here. Me and Bob Vila, he's the same way. Here's another storage compartment in the back. And this is also where the control handle is. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this rear compartment. And anybody that's seen me do a Numar video knows that I absolutely love this compartment because it gives you a place to store everything. I, I like to have extra oil, WD-40, brake cleaner, shotgun shells. Um, you can put your uh, tables down here or um, slide in uh, picnic chairs or picnic table. Um, I don't think kids will quite fit in this one, but you could put them in the other one if you needed a place for extra kids. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. 
All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about tow capacity. So this coach has a 20,000 pound towing capacity. So to put that into perspective, uh, most open trailers or enclosed trailers with a car in it, you're probably gonna come in somewhere between 5,000 to 10,000 pounds at the top end. So you have lots of extra capacity on this. Uh, last year, we went to the Newmar Country Club rally in Rock Springs, Wyoming. I flat towed my F-250, and that's really how I like to travel. I like to pull a four-door pickup with a camper shell. Literally, um, and I'm not exaggerating, I can unhook that pickup in three minutes and be ready to move on, and uh, it just works out very well for us. But the closing comment on this coach is how beautiful it is and how much it does. Now we're gonna go ahead and move to the inside and talk about what's going on in there. Okay, before we go into this model 3727, I wanna talk a little bit about the entrance door. First thing is you got a lighted grab handle. We also have a doorbell right here, as well as a key coded entry, which I really like so I don't have to pack keys with me. Um, another neat thing is when I open the door, Notice the hydraulic slide coming out. So this is hydraulically operated, but I really like how low to the ground, so it makes the steps nice and easy. And we're gonna talk about getting in and out um, a little more when I get into the coach. We've, we've added a nice feature to this coach. So we're gonna go in and talk about it a little bit. Okay, now that I'm inside, one of the things that we wanna talk about is the space with the slides in. And this thing has um, two slides on this side as well as a full wall slide. So it is a little tight getting through here, but it's definitely manageable. Um, as I get through here, I still have room to access the microwave, the sink, make a cup of coffee or whatever when I'm pulled over to rest area. I also have access into the bathroom. as well as I do have access to get here in the bed if I wanted to take a nap without having to run the slides out. Um, I also want to remind people, um, you know, when I pull into a rest area and space is a little tight, it's not unreasonable to just push the slide out another eight to 10 inches just to give you a little more walking room here, um, especially when space is at a premium. But I hope we've done a good job here of kind of showing uh, what this thing looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the slides and so you can really get a good uh, look at this thing with everything pushed out. Let's talk about a couple things. One thing is, is that we noticed when we were at the country club um, event in Rock Springs, Wyoming, the Newmar event, we noticed a lot of people reaching for a grab handle that wasn't there. So we had our shop install this grab handle. This isn't a Newmar, this is, this is an IWS. And these are little things why people do business with us because we're always trying to think about these things and, and, and really help solve people's problems but you have this nice grab handle right here and I also didn't touch on that you have light controls right here manual uh, we'll go into that a lot more so I'm going to open this up and uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, close the step right here so I can step up here and talk this thing's pretty neat especially if you have uh, small kids with you or small dogs or, or some rodents of some sort um, they're not going to fall down the stairs Okay, we're gonna talk about the controls here and just kind of lightly touch on them, not get too uh, crazy in depth, but I want you to know what a, a brief understanding of what everything is. And one of the things that I need to point out is <clears throat> when I was outside, I said some of the coaches uh, with the Oasis hydronic heating, you can use the uh, Oasis heater to warm up the coach engine. And this one doesn't have that option, so I stand corrected. 
but you can select from diesel fired heat if you're off the grid or you can put AC or 110 power AC power on if you're plugged in somewhere like at a campground to run the burner. The choice is yours. This is a power control module that's cleaning up the power coming in and out. This is where your uh, inverter is and your auto gen start is so we can work with you to program your generator to come on or off automatically. We can actually program it to come on when the coach gets so hot inside and then the AC will kick on automatically. Or we can keep it as simple as possible and just have it where you just turn it on or off with a button. Your wine guard controller, solar panel charger up here, battery disconnect. If you want to leave the coach for a long time, you can shut the batteries off. This entry lock locks the, the steps out. This is to lock the front door. Um, so this is your step cover that goes up and down that I showed you. Now this does have an engine block heater on it, so you can turn this on and um, AC power will heat the engine block up. Your patio light, a reset switch for the slides if you ever need to use that, as well as all the security lights outside that we talked about. Um, and here's the slides for the uh, curbside as well as the street side. Your HW, HWH auto leveling. Uh, once you leave our place, you should just be able to hit auto level every time in the jacks auto level. When it's time to leave, you just hit retract and the jacks all come up. So everything is housed right here. All right, now I'm gonna start my way around the coach and talk about the dinette. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump in this dinette. And we've been equipping this in a lot of our coaches because I just think they're very comfortable. And it's really nice just to sit in them like this. If there's a couple people over there, you're having you know, a few cocktails or you're just visiting, this is a really nice way to sit. This also table also has add a leaf, so you can add leaves to it. And we also have chairs that we're gonna show you a little bit later. So there's add on chairs for out there. There's also the televator right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get up and push the button that's on the other side and you can watch the televator come on up. So I'm gonna push that button and it comes up. Also wanna point out there's 110 outlets on each side so everybody has a place to keep their laptop charged, their cell phone charged, their iPad. And on the subject of an iPad, uh, when you buy a coach from us, you get our IWS Advantage package. And in here we have all kinds of features about the coach. We have emergency numbers. When you buy a coach from IWS, we carry a cell phone with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and somebody's going to be there to answer the phone. Um, in here, you can also find all of the controls for the, um, the coach's controls to control all of the lighting and all of that. Uh, we haven't got it enabled on this one right at the moment, but you know, it's very important to me if you're stranded alongside the road that you can just bring up our iPad and you have all of our emergency numbers and somebody to call in a time of distress. We're gonna be there for you. And you do get the iPad to keep. That's something we're really proud of. Okay, now I'm gonna move around on the coach and show you the theater seating. So these are kind of nice. They got a USB charging port right here, as well as uh, powered recliners. I'll go ahead and lean it way back. So you got a nice spot to sit here and watch your TV. Also have a nice storage compartment in here and it's got this nice little sliding tray so you can put extra stuff in here. That's a great place you can keep your rodent food. Everybody in the coach filming thought that was pretty funny. Okay. You got overhead storage compartments here as well as overhead lighting. Now we're gonna move over into the kitchen and uh, we're gonna start out by just folding up this little counter extension, which I think is pretty dang cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove these covers and store them down here. And then I can show you the double basin stainless steel sink. Now the thing to remember as we go around this coach they pack a lot in a 37 foot motorhome. Absolutely unbelievable amount of space in here and mobility inside of this coach. Um, 
very, very impressed with how they've done this coach. So you have your dual stainless steel sinks. You got lots of overhead storage compartments, convection microwave, which is the same as you would have in a residential house. I want to remove these covers and show you that the bottom of it is also a cutting board. I'm just going to set these right here. So this is a true induction cooktop and my wife is a baker. She always wanted gas in all of our coaches and we gave the induction cooktop a try and we absolutely love it. One of the reasons we love it is um, we have extra storage space on here instead of just the gas burners. But let me show you a neat feature. If we want to cook outside, we can literally lift this out, unplug it right there, and we can take this induction cooktop right outside and cook outside with it. So um, I really think they've done a good job of, of thinking of everything. All right, I want to talk a little bit about this digital control panel. So I'm an analog guy, so I like the buttons. So the nice thing about this coach is everywhere you look around it, there's buttons. So we can turn lights on and off with the manual buttons. But you also have this touch screen and I'm really coming to like it. Um, if we want to turn all the lights off in the living room, we just push that button. If we want to turn them all on, we just turn them all on. All kinds of options. You can Bluetooth pair it, which our iPad so you can be able to mirror the screen on your iPad so if you're laying in the bed you can run it or turn it on or off. Um, I want to talk you through some of the other functions. Um, here we can see the fresh water status, the gray tank, the black tank, turn the water pump on or off, the tank heaters. Um, here again it's all lights off or all lights on. The auto gen start, we can monitor that there as well as start it and turn it off from here. We can set the inside temperature up or down. It's very intuitive. A lot of people that are worried about this technology once they use this, and I really like that they put it at eye level, so it's very easy to run. You can turn the bedroom heat on or off, high or low, as well as the living room. That's your Bluetooth pair and you're back to your light. So very, very intuitive. Okay, this is just the fantastic pad for in here. Now we have the bathroom. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let Tim try to film in here the best he can to show you around. One thing to point out is if you'll notice, there's a fold down uh, bench in the shower, which is really nice. And you'll also see the shower miser. And what that does is normally when you're running your coach, and let's say you're trying to live off the grid and you're carrying your water with you so you don't want to waste water. In a normal coach, you're going to turn the hot water on and the hot water just runs until it gets hot enough for you to take a shower. With the shower miser, you flip that lever and the water circulates. And once it gets hot enough for you to use, a light comes on and then you step in the shower and then you've got hot water, hence shower miser. It's kind of a neat thing. I was pretty excited when they brought that out. I'm a guy that likes to stay off the grid a lot. Uh, Full-size residential um, refrigerator with freezer. Need to unlock it. As you can see, lots of room right here. Very important to have a good refrigerator. Um, the reason we like this residential style is if you're a diabetic or something and you need to keep your medicine at the right temperature, all of that stuff becomes very important when you're traveling on the road. You also have the freezer with an ice maker on it. You also have a water um, dispenser right here. Here's a pantry with slide out drawers, which is really nice. Um, they also have some adjustability into them. Now we're in the bedroom. Nice TV, nice window, nice counter. I'll also point out that it works pretty cool. I know my wife will sit on the edge of the bed if she needs to and she can slide that towards her with her makeup and sit here and have that work. So you have a lot of adjustability. 
stacked washer and dryer. Okay, now you got your wardrobe closet. Go ahead and slide this open. Hanging racks. And then I'll slide this open the other way. And I'm hoping uh, Tim can see the safe in there so it's got a built-in safe. Another neat feature is if you sleep with a CPAP, you've got a 110 outlet as well as USB chargers on each side of the bed, which is just something that for a lot of people it's very important. And it, everything that's going on here is just to help enhance you as you're traveling down the road. So I hope you've liked this interior tour. Now we're going to just finish up by talking a little bit about the chassis. All right, just like my exercise uh, planner that I have on my app, the little guy comes on and says, don't give up, you're almost there. I wanna caution you, don't give up, we're almost there. We just got the cab to go through. Um, but here we are inside of this uh, Freightliner M2106 cab. And I think I'll just start with the steering wheel right here. And if you push this foot pedal down here, it'll tilt up as well as uh, telescope so that's a nice feature on it but everything about this is just about the driver and you can see we've got nice armrest and they ratchet up which is a feature that I really like go ahead and get this side up also has full air controls on it as well as lumbar all air operated um, lots of adjustability in this seat so I want to talk you through some of the controls okay this is just a power outlet your USB chargers. Here's an air dump. And this is the shade for the skylight. And I'm gonna go ahead and run that up so we can get some video of that. And this will open and close the uh, overhead skylight. All right, this is a camera. If we're gonna hook a camera onto the trailer that you're pulling behind you, this is a differential lock. So, if you get off road and one wheel is spinning, you can come to a stop, push this button in. Whoop, there, it just <laughs> doesn't like it with the engine not running. But that will lock the two rear wheels together and give you positive, uh, positive traction in the rear end until you get out of the unstuck and then you can unlock that. This is neat, this is called the light test. So when I push this button, I can go out of the motorhome and it's going to cycle through all of the marker lights so I can walk around and see all of the lights working. Um, it's kind of a neat feature. Uh, cab ceiling lights, docking lights, which is the LED lights outside. You can also start the generator from here. This is the house battery boost. So let's just say you get in your coach and for some reason the batteries won't start the generator. You can start the coach up hold this button down and it'll transfer the, the batteries from the coach to the house to give you an extra boost to start the generator. Um, this is an air ride um, override so you can lower the rear air suspension with this right here. Door lock, power windows, heated mirrors which is really nice if you're traveling in the cold. Here's your high and low engine brake, and then this is the on and off switch to turn the engine brake on and on, which will help you for deceleration. Any of you that have gone down the road and a semi, you flashed your headlights and told the semi it's okay to get over and their tail lights blink, that's this marker interrupter. You can just flick this button once and it'll blink your lights at the person behind you. <clears throat> you have your full complement of gauges up here, as well as cruise control. Uh, your marker lights and then this is to increase and decrease the lighting on it that pretty much sums up all of the controls in it but a few things that like we talked outside is if you notice my seating position the tires are outboard so i'm sitting inside the edge of the road so i don't feel like i'm falling off of the road i really like that i'm a lot closer to the passenger in here so we don't have to yell back and forth when we're having a conversation some of the big class a's i think you need a uh walkie-talkies to talk to each other because you're so far away but I really like the seating position because I feel very natural just like I'm in my uh, f-250 pickup 
I like where the mirrors are, air horn. Everything is just very ergonomically centered around the driver. You gotta remember, this chassis was built for somebody that was gonna make their living all day, every day driving this thing. So they put a lot of thought into how the functions are, even the big cup holders, all of that. Very functional in this coach. Talk you a little bit about the sound system or the stereo in this. So uh, we have navigation on it. Um, it'll also run Apple CarPlay. But something that's really neat is we can go to the menu screen and we can go to camera and you're gonna get all these different views. So here we can look left side of the coach. It's hard because we have the slide out, right side. Um, I can go to the 360 camera and see the top of the coach and 360 degrees around it. Um, all kinds of options. Even when you're looking out the back, you have a rear view, if you can notice there, our shop. Now I can go to horizon view and it just spread the whole view out. You can see one of our pickups parked over there now. So all kinds of options. And of course you have, you know, all your normal Bluetooth, uh, or XM radio, uh, Sirius XM, I guess is the new term for it or the proper term. Well, we made it. So those of you that stuck with me, Thank you. I hope you learned something from this. As I mentioned at the beginning, my goal was to make you an informed buyer. I uh, also want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. People don't realize this. Uh, we're in a town of about, I think 12,000 people. We're in the middle of nowhere. So your comments and when you come by and say hi to us, it means a lot to us because we get lonely out here. <laughs> so anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you out on the road.